Hi, my name is Kweku. I'm a pharmacist. In this brief video, I'll review the medication Jardians, also known by its chemical name Empagliflozin. I will cover its uses and how it works. We will cover who should and who should not use Jardians. We will talk about how and when to take it, some side effects, our potential drug interactions, and some precautions and best practices. As always, this video is for informational purposes only, so please do not start, stop, or make any changes to your medication without first talking to your doctor. So let's start with the basics. What is Jardians? Well, Jardians and Pagliflozin is a prescription medication primarily used to lower blood sugar levels in adults with type 2 diabetes. In addition to improving blood sugar control, Jardians can also enhance heart health and kidney function for some people with diabetes. It is approved to reduce the risk of death from heart-related issues and to lower the chances of hospitalization due to heart failure in adults with type 2 diabetes who already have heart disease. Jardians is also prescribed for adults with heart failure to decrease the risk of cardiovascular death and hospitalization related to heart failure. Additionally, Jardians may be used to slow the progression of kidney disease in adults with type 2 diabetes and diabetic kidney disease. Now let's talk about how Jardians works. Now Jardians is a part of a group of medicines called SGLT2 inhibitors. Now, SGLT2 is a protein in the kidneys that reabsorbs glucose from the urine back into the bloodstream. So ordinarily, when your kidneys are forming urine, they have to decide what is good for the body and what the body needs versus what they deem as a waste product that must be excreted in the urine. Now, glucose or sugar is something the kidneys think is good for the body. So this protein called SGLT2 causes the kidneys to reabsorb the sugar back into the bloodstream. Now, if you are diabetic, that is the last thing that you want because you have extra glucose being dumped back into your bloodstream. So this is where Jardians comes in. It blocks this SGLT2, which is responsible for reabsorbing sugar or glucose, allowing excess glucose to be excreted in the urine in the process. So this helps lower blood sugar levels. So in very simple and straightforward terms, Jardians causes you to pee out excess sugar. That's as basic as it gets. Now let's talk about who should be careful with Jardians. Now while Jardians can be very effective for many people, it may not be suitable for everyone. Now, there are some situations where caution is advised or Jardians should completely not be used. I will start with the first group who are generally not considered to be good candidates uh, for Jardians. So the first group is people who have severe kidney problems or are on dialysis. Uh, also, obviously, if you are allergic to empagliflozin, the active ingredient, then obviously you are not a good candidate for Jardians. Also, if you have a history of diabetic ketoacidosis, which simply means increased ketones in your blood or urine. Now, type 1 diabetics are also not good candidates for Jardians just because they are at an elevated risk of diabetic ketoacidosis that I mentioned earlier. Now, the next group of people may take Jardians but may require additional monitoring by your doctor or they may be required to take extra precautions. So, for example, if you have some types of kidney disease, your doctor is going to evaluate and determine whether you should stay on Jardians or whether additional monitoring is required. Uh, if you have a history of urinary tract infections or genital infections, more monitoring or extra precaution is required. Also, if you are at a risk of dehydration, so for example, if you are taking water pills or you are a little older, more monitoring is required. Now, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding or planning to become pregnant, Jardians is generally not recommended during the second and third trimester of pregnancy. Now let's talk about how to take Jardians. Now obviously your dosage will be determined by your doctor, but generally speaking, 10 milligrams once daily in the morning is the starting dose. It may be taken with or without food. Uh, this dose may be increased to about 25 milligrams once daily based on your blood sugar levels and how well you tolerate the medication. It's best practice to try and take Jardians at the same time each day, you know, just so you can remember. But I know that life happens and sometimes, you know, you may miss a dose. If you do, take it as soon as you remember. However, if it is almost time for your next dose, you, know, you may want to skip the missed dose and continue with your regular dosing schedule. There's really no need to double up on doses to make up for a missed dose. Now let's take a look at some side effects. Like all medications, Jardians can have side effects. 
Uh, some of the more common side effects include urinary tract infections, affecting about 7.6 to about 9.3% of, of the general population. However, that percentage increases to about 15.1% to 15.7% in people older than 75 years. So if you're older, you are at a relatively higher risk of developing some of these side effects. Genital yeast infections is another common side effect occurring in both men and women in about 5.4 to about 6.4% in women. Increased urination, about 3.2% to 3.4%. You know, one of the more reasons why a morning dose is recommended so that you don't, it doesn't disturb your sleep. If you take it at night, you're more likely to wake up to go to the bathroom. There's also been reports of increased thirst, um, nausea, joint pain, upper respiratory tract infections, and even sometimes changes in cholesterol levels. Now, there have been some studies that have suggested that a small increase in LDL may occur while on Jardian, so uh, definitely keep an eye on that. Now, the next set of side effects are less common, but these are the ones that tend to be more serious, and these are the ones that you should really be picking up the phone and discussing with your doctor. So, for example, dehydration. Now, signs of dehydration include increased thirst, uh, a dry mouth, feeling lightheaded, being faint, or sometimes even having a dark urine. The next one is diabetic ketoacidosis, which can include nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, unusual tiredness, and trouble breathing. Obviously, if you have a severe allergic reaction, like a rash, itch, or swelling, these are the ones that if you experience any of them, you really should not waste time, pick up the phone, call your doctor, and have a discussion. Now, the next thing we'll talk about is potential drug interactions. And with this one, I'm not saying that Jardians can never be taken with any of these medications, only that caution should be exercised. And it's also good practice to discuss all medications that you're taking with your doctor just to avoid you know, any mishap or anything dangerous down the line. So the first group of medications are diuretics or water pills. You know, taking Jardians with diuretics may increase your risk of dehydration. So be sure to let your doctor know if you're taking a diuretic. Also, insulin and other diabetic medications, you know, combining Jardians with these medications can increase your risk of low blood sugar. A typical example is a class of medications we call sulfonylureas, which include uh, glipizide, gliburide. They have a greater risk of causing low blood sugar when combined with Jardians. In some instances, your doctor may need to adjust the doses of some of these medications if you are taking them with Jardians. It's also advisable to limit or avoid excessive consumption of alcohol and caffeine as these can potentially worsen some of the side effects or even affect blood sugar control altogether. Now let's talk about some precautions and best practices. Stay hydrated by drinking plenty of fluids, especially when you are starting Jardians or when you are in, you know, in a place where the weather is hot. Obviously, if you are, have some kind of a kidney patient and you're on fluid restriction, then discuss that with your doctor. But generally speaking, staying hydrated is a good thing. Also, make sure you know that the signs, the symptoms of low blood sugar if you're taking Jardians or if you're taking it with insulin and that's some of the other medications that I described earlier. Another pro tip, practice good hygiene to help prevent urinary tract and genital infections. Also, best practice to monitor your blood sugar levels regularly or as directed by your doctor, especially when you start it or when the dose is increased. I sincerely hope you found value in this review. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, share with somebody who may need it, and as always, stay blessed, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.